All right, ladies and gentlemen. Today I'm going to demonstrate how to use the Cappy's Magic Mortar Calculator. Here you can see in front of me I have a British 4-inch mortar. I also have a British 3-inch mortar to show different mortar types. And I have some targets over here. I'm not sure if I have binoculars. I do. You can see I want to hit these buildings over here with some mortars. So, currently the problem that I have is that I do not have an easy way to calculate a solution using the mortar. For those of you that have ever used a mortar before, you can tell, or you know, that it does have a um, set of information over here on the side that allows you to roughly calculate your positional value in terms of how high to elevate the mortar, uh, but it doesn't give you inf information or feedback on what angle to use. People have discussed many other ways in which to do this, but there is an online postscriptum calculator. My hope is to take that calculator and make it something that is all on screen. So, to do that, I have gone ahead and I've authored a script using AutoHotKey to do exactly that. Here you can see Cappy's Mortar Calculator 0 0.5, 0 0.15. I'm going to go ahead and open that up, and you will notice this little blue set of information up here <clears throat> that has now taken residency in my upper left-hand corner of my screen. That tells me that the script is now engaged and ready to go, and it's waiting for some information. In particular, it wants to know what kind of mortar I'm in. Well, I'm in a 4-inch mortar, so that is a heavy mortar. So I'm going to go ahead and hit the Page Down button in order to change my mortar type to Heavy Mortar. Then, I'm going to go ahead and bring up my map. Pardon me, i got to cough. In the map screen, what I want to point to is down in the lower right-hand corner, underneath your map screen, you have something that's going to show some positional data. Uh, right now, as I'm moving my mouse around on the map, you can see that positional data changing. It is a keypad-based system in which the grid reference on the screen is related to the keypad number that is displayed below. But what I need you to see is that when I take my mouse completely off of the map and the map is completely zoomed out, that changes not just to mouse position but to player position, as you can see on the screen. This is very important because we want to know where our mortar is. So the moment it goes into player position, it can now see where you are currently sitting. I'm currently sitting at K322. You can see that down here. And you, if I get too close, it'll try to mouse over the map. K322 is my current position. Well, I want to import that into the mortar calculator. I'm going to go ahead and do that and hit Home. By hitting Home, you see now it says K322 up in the upper right-hand corner. Sometimes it will not appropriately get your position, and it will give some feedback as to, hey, help me out. Type in the number that you just saw. Here's a little image to help you out. This is what I saw, but I didn't understand it. So it's using an on-screen uh, text re recognition hardware in order to do that, or software in order to do that. So I found my mortar position. It's K322. Now I want to go ahead and I want to set my target. To do that, I, I found that the best thing to do is to zoom in as closely as possible onto the target. And partly that's because you want your highest accuracy because what this calculator will do is it will aim at each individual little square. So whichever square you are currently in, the little outlined in white squares is what I'm talking about, it's going to aim for one, the middle of one of those squares, whichever your mouse is currently over. The problem right now with the state of postscriptum slash squad 44 is that there's a bug with this map and it does not appropriately display the position down here, nor if I were to right click on the map, if I were a squad leader, and try to put some marks onto the map, like so, you see it's not going directly to my, my mouse location, there's a little bit of difference in where that is being set up. Well this also negatively affects how we're placing our marks uh, for our mortar. So, but what's important is that it is showing us the mouse position when we mouse over these particular locations. This is super important. Pardon me, I got a cough again. Because it allows us to grab this positional data down here based off of where the mouse currently is on the map. Well, the way that I've set that up is if I hit the F4 key on the keyboard, it will look over at this lower right hand corner, it'll grab that information and grab that as a target location. It then calculates 
this isn't actually the range, it's the mill that we're going to use to hit the target. And these are some dispersion values that give us uh, an up or down dispersion to allow us to hit a target within about 100 meters of that point. Here we can see the angle value. Well, what I've done is I've made a target for about right here, which is actually where those buildings we were just looking at actually exist. So that's somewhere like around here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to set up those uh, values. So I do have some keyboard binds that allow me to scroll through my, my numbers a little bit quicker than most people. I can show people how to do that if, if they're interested in that. Uh, it's not part of the script. But I can very quickly scroll over to, we want to try to get to this number right here around 1443 <coughs> as our vertical 1443 so I'm just gonna kinda scroll up 1443 is around there we'll kinda keep that as reference and then we want to go to an angle of 205 and so you can see 205 is right about here so it's right on the middle of that warehouse like I told you the map is not exactly perfect I'm gonna go ahead and release three smoke rounds and rapid succession and let's see if based off of a heavy mortar if this solution is correct so there's one here comes a second and we're waiting on our third and because the heavy mortar takes so long it's gonna be about 30 seconds before those mortar rounds hit I'm gonna go ahead and bring up my binoculars and we should see that if this is all correct that those those uh, rounds will start popping off around that location if the uh, the calculation is indeed correct for the mortar itself but as you can tell it, it does take a while there we go here's our first round coming in <coughs> here comes our second round and then our third will be hitting momentarily and you can see there's a little bit of dispersion, but it is pretty much on target with where we put that pip on the map. That's with a heavy mortar. Let's go ahead and try a medium mortar. I can clear the targets that are currently on the screen by hitting the F5 key, so that gets rid of any current targets. Currently, my mortar is set up for heavy. I'm going to go ahead and change that to medium, because this is a medium mortar. The 6 centimeter? No. Um... 60 millimeter mortar from the US is the light mortar. It actually calculates the same as the medium mortar, so you can actually use medium or light for that. That's fine. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and bring up my map because I want now to get that target yet again. So we said that, that was right around here, I believe, is where we put our mouse. I'm going to hit F4 and I'm going to go ahead and import that target. And you can see it gives me different data this time because this is a different mortar. It's the same angle, but it gives me a different mill value to use of my mortar. I'm going to scroll up to about 1317, so that's around here. And then I'm going to go to, <coughs> pardon me, I'm going to go to uh, 205, is right about here. So 1317, I'm going to, oh, that was HE, let's go to smoke. <coughs> Pardon me, I got a cold. I'm going to let off three rounds, just as I did before. And then, what I want you to see is that I also have these dispersion values that you can see for angle and range. I'm going to go ahead and slew to the right about four degrees, and you will see that's going to move my... Oh, well, my rounds are coming in, so why don't we go look at that. These are a little bit faster. And you can see, hey... They're hitting the same mark. They're hitting the exact same mark as our previous mortars were. Now, because the medium mortar is a, a little bit more precise, all of those are hitting the same value. Which is why, as I was trying to point out just a moment ago, these dispersion values right up here are so very important. This gives us a left-right dispersion based off of this value right here. As this goes up, these values will get larger. It doesn't update concurrently with as like as I modify this it doesn't immediately change the values in my target but if I add that target again it will change those dispersion values so let's go ahead and use some of these dispersion values you saw when I did the, the slewing of about four degrees that put that next round right over there that's about a hundred meters away which is exactly what I wanted to occur so anywhere between 
my target of 205 and 209 will give me about a 100 meter spread right or left. <coughs> the other values that you see next to the range, right over here, give me a forward and back based off of where my mortar is. It's not a perfect square, but it's square-like, so uh, it will help you to target. Now, the cool thing about this mortar calculator is not only can it hold one target, it can hold multiple targets. Let me go back to the heavy mortar so I can show you this function. I'm going to go ahead and change my mortar type to heavy again. I'm going to delete all my current targets. And now I'm going to zoom in on some other opportunities. So here was my first target right over here. Let me go ahead and add that by hitting F4. Then I'm going to come over and I'm going to find another target. Let's say that I wanted to go down the road to, to the houses at the end of this long road where there's a hotel and there's another warehouse. I want to try to hit this crossroads. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to zoom in and I'm going to hit F4 again. Aha! And all of a sudden you can see now there is a new target that has been added. This current target. What this allows me to do is to add additional targets. In fact, we can add up to six targets on screen at any one given time. And it will refresh each of these targets as we go along. If I have five, of course it deletes all those targets again, but I'm going to go ahead and pull up that same target. I want to hit that area right there with my heavy mortar with smoke. And you can see that it's got some dispersion associated with it as well. Uh, 19 for our back and forth, and then about two degrees for our right and left, which is different than it was before. And this is dynamic. It will change based off of how far away the target is. Okay, so we want to hit 201. 201 is about here. And then we want to go for 1179. So we're going to bring this down to 1179. 1179 is right about there. Okay, so 201.8 is actually right about there. 1179 is about there. And now I can go about 2 degrees to the right or left, like so. Uh, 201, so there we go. And I can also go up about 19. So about 19 would take me about here. So what this should do is it should give me a cross looking mark on my actual location. So I'm going to go into admin cam and I'm going to get real high up and hopefully we should be able to see those rounds hitting deep on those crossroads. And I think if we were able to zoom in, which I can't unfortunately, you can see those mortar rounds popping off exactly near that crossroads. I'm going to get closer so that we can see. But there you go. You can see the spread of those rounds directly around the crossroads that we had targeted. It's not perfect because every round moves a little bit left or right on its, on its own. There's a dispersion that's natural to the mortar itself. Some are much more accurate or precise than others. For example, the 60 millimeter mortar is almost dead accurate. Um, the medium mortars are a little bit more accurate, and then of course these are the least accurate. But you can see there's that spread, characteristic spread around the exact target that we wanted to hit. Again, if we wanted to add more targets, we just go to our map, and we can go ahead and click on somewhere else. Now the cool thing is, if it's out of range, pardon me, I got a cough again. If it's out of range, it will show you. It will show you when a target is out of range. So I, I purposefully selected a location that was out of range and it of course gave me some feedback that that is indeed out of range. Also there will be some times in which it cannot find the uh, information that was down here. It can't parse this particular string right here. It gets a, a, a wrong number and this is exactly the function that will happen on your screen when it can't find that text, when it can't figure out what this actually says. It thought that it said just K11, and it missed that 1-1. One, one. So I got to go in and manually add back in that 1.1 one one to get my actual target. So if there are issues in which you can't get a target to show up, or it can't find that text on the screen, it will go ahead and it will prompt you for more information as to how to address that missing target.
A better example is you'll see exactly what happens if I hit F4 again. It, it couldn't find even the information because it's not on the screen in the right location. And so I can just type in gobbledygook and it will, you know, it'll try to calculate something based off of a position that doesn't even exist. So I could type in anything, but as you see, you know, as I import, there's going to be some locations on the map that might be difficult for it to read, but most of these locations, it's doing just fine pulling them, at least in 4K. And I understand a lot of you play in much smaller resolutions, and so as a result, that backup has been added in there. I know with 1920, there's some issues getting those uh, locations off the screen a little bit more easily just because there's just not as much pixels. Anyway, this has been a full demonstration of the mortar calculator. If you are ready to go ahead and exit the mortar calculator at any point, you just hit the end key, and it's gone. All right. Hopefully this helps you all out. I hope you have a good time using it. Bye from Cappy.